Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today, including Jason Strudwick in Edmonton, standing by, brought to you by the Bayside Oceanfront Resort. Book your stay at the Bayside. Enjoy the many amenities the hotel has to offer. Oceanfront rooms, free parking, restaurant, cafe, indoor and outdoor pools, gym, and more. Call 250-248-8333 or go to their website, BaysideResortParksville.com. Gary on Vancouver Island, or Van Isle, as mm. he uh, puts it. Delaney's okay, Tyron Langley inbox. Guys, any word on Euler injuries in the wake of losing uh, Game 7? Well, if anybody would know, it might be uh, Jason Strudwick, yeah. our, our buddy. We don't have any word a- at this point and nothing on, on social media so far or nothing that we've heard. Jason Strudwick joins us now, co-host of the Got Your Back uh, podcast, former NHL defenseman. Jason, thanks for doing this. You're becoming a regular. We're going to have to start uh, paying you, although I see the Messier uh, print is still in the background there, so I, I don't know about that. How are you? I'm good. I'm tired, guys. I, I'm not used to going this long in the summer for sports. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I was out April, middle of May, and I was just hitting the links and getting in shape, so this old dog's got to figure this out if the owner's going to try to keep going deep. Okay, now speaking of the Oilers, you heard what I just said uh, from our Delaney's OK yeah. Tire and Langley inbox. Any word on uh, injuries to Dreisaitl, McDavid, etc.? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was something that you know I think is really interesting to see what guys have battled through on on both teams. And we heard you know Maurice kind of divulge a little bit about Bennett and uh, Kachuk and such. Mm-hmm. Didn't see anything about the Oilers. Now I'm I'm guessing they're flying home today. And what's a pretty probably somber flight? Uh, maybe some availability either yeah. uh, what day? I don't know what day. Is it Wednesday, maybe Thursday, and maybe guys. But you know, when you lose, you really, I don't think you really want to talk about it too much. I know mm-hmm. when, when Drysdale hurt his ankle a couple of years ago, he didn't really make a big deal of it. But I, I gotta believe that you know the way Leon was shooting or unable to shoot the puck, uh, there had to be yeah. something maybe hand, yeah. wrist, arms. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think uh, everybody had heard that, and we'll. Uh, well, I don't think the right phrase is to look forward to the news, but we'll hear about it, I'm sure, as the week goes on. Okay, so the Panthers win game 7-2-1. Did the better team win this series, Jason? Well, you know what? It's funny. It was like, you know, three games for the Panthers, three games for the Oilers. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I, I honestly thought that the Panthers were were beat. Um, yeah. I thought the Oilers were playing really well. You know, power play. Henley Kill was going really well. Stu Skinner played well. Um, but you've got to give full marks to the Panthers. They came out and they asserted their game style on the Oilers, something the Oilers had done the previous three games. Uh, they were they were tighter defensively. They took away a lot of skating space for Connor McDavid. And man, did they make it hard to score goals. I mean, you, you lose 2-1 in the final, game seven. That's pretty yeah. good to give up two goals. You'd think you'd be able to score a second goal to at least get to overtime. Hmm. And uh, Panthers didn't. They didn't, didn't give that up. So, you know, Bobrovsky was not the same goalie in games four, five, six as he was in, for sure, game one and, and two and then into game seven. So, um, you know, I thought they were reeling, looking for something bad to happen. Instead, they came out and they asserted their game. So, yes, I believe it was it, you have one game. You have mm-hmm. one game yep. to prove it. Florida proved it. They won it. They're the Stanley Cup champion. So, yes, they were the better team. Hey, Jason, uh, Connor McDavid, no points last two games, but the games before that, the two, he had eight points. What happened in the last two games for him? Well, I think that Florida really did a good job. And and when I see teams playing well against Florida, what they do is they get up ice as much as possible and kind of get in his way so he can't build up that speed. I thought in games, for sure, four and five, he found a lot of open ice. And, you know, when he finds open ice, I'm, I'm not talking about 20 feet. I'm talking about five. And he's yeah. gone. He gets that speed and he's gone. So, you know, when he finds that, he's dangerous. I thought the Panthers did a good job getting up the ice, taking that away from him. Uh, the penalty kill for the Oilers was dominant. But you know what? Florida was right underneath. I don't know what the next word is. You guys are the wordsmiths. But whatever isn't quite dominant, the one underneath that, that's what Florida was in their PK. They did a great yes. job against the Oilers in their PK. Um, and the, the, I thought a couple of things they did is they they took away dry saddle shot. They did a really good job of fronting or making Bouchard change his shot from the point, which is something that the Oilers are really used to doing. And off of those two things, usually chaos ensues, and that's where you get the the Hymans or the new John Hopkins or you know Connor, you know, flying all over the place and making plays. So massive, massive props to Vancouver or to to Florida and their penalty kill. All right, Jason, are you okay with uh, McDavid not coming out 
and accepting his MVP award on the ice and staying in the dressing room. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have come up to get it either. I mean, yeah. that's not the trophy you're there for. That's and it. So then what do you do? You, br you bring it back in the dressing room. Hey, guys, look at what I got. Look yeah. at I, I'm so awesome. Look, I won it. Congratulate, congratulate me. Tell me how awesome I'm in. And there's guys crying. Big time. You can see after every single playoffs, uh, sorry, Stanley Cup final. Again, I've never been in them, but I've watched many. It, all the guys coming up to interviews are red rimmed. They're, they're not yep. high. Those guys are crying. They are just, they're in tears. You work for so long. You start the summer, then you go exhibition, regular season, four rounds of playoffs, then you lose in a game seven. You're not thrilled. So is the expectation that Connor McDavid, his team's already off the ice. Do you want him to walk back on the ice amongst a big celebration, put his hands there and say, look at me, but I got it, then bring him back in the room? Yep. I have no problem with that. I, I honestly have no, I think Connor does a lot of things really, really well. And 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 he's, he's very good at the media. He's improved a ton. But I don't think there's any reason to fault him for not going back out there. And I'd say that about anyone. Even players I hate, I would have said it's okay not to come out there <laughs> to, to accept that award because it's you're not there for that. That That's doesn't it? it's it's like seeing a you know your ex girlfriend fall in love with a new guy who's better looking, more hair, richer, better personality, <laughs> and you want to go have dinner beside them. Like you're no. not with your mom or your dad. It's not happening. So I'm sorry. No, he doesn't have to come back out and and anyone who's saying that is just like a, a mcdavid hater just like they'd be mad at austin matthews or uh yeah. you know whoever david pasternak go through the list is there something about your past you want to tell us uh, jason that happened one night uh, yeah. a lot of bad breakups my friends i, I always consoled my friends i never actually had one <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> lucky man hey where do the oilers uh, go from here dry saddle one more year left in his contract yeah. that's going to dominate talk all ne next season you know that uh, some key ufas connor brown being one where do they go from here how do they if they can build on this well, it's crazy. You know, it's it's such a quick turnaround. You know, there there's yeah. Orn Frogo played the Stanley Cup game seven last night. He could be on a new team next Monday. Yep. Right. So he's gotta, you know, sober up, maybe go fly around, find somewhere to to, to play if, if if that's what he wants to do. The biggest challenge for the Oilers right now is who's gonna be in the GM chair. Right. There's uh, a lot yeah, of talk. His that, contract's uh, up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it is. And he's Ken Holland's done a great job, I believe, with this team. Is it made some mistakes? Yeah, every team's made mistakes. Uh, as, or every GM has made mistakes. So now they're going to have to figure out who the GM is. Is it Jeff Jackson for now? Is there someone else? Is Ken Hall standing up for a year? I don't know, but I, I can tell he's a free agent. I wasn't even that good a player. Who's calling me? Who's the guy in charge? Who's going to be a GM? Is this guy, you know, does he like me? Does he not like me? You're not going to go sign the team. You don't even know who the GM is. So that's a yeah. big thing that I think they've probably been working on. I'm not an insider, but I'm guessing they've got something, you know, in mind, whether it's internal or it'll bring someone else to the side. I don't know. Then after that, yeah, Leon Drysettle dominates the conversation. Now, if Leon doesn't want to sign July 1st, a new contract, is that the end of the world? Mm -hmm. No, I don't believe it is. Um, they have a lot of their main pieces coming back next year. Um, but they do have to figure out kind of where he wants to go. But I think if I'm Leon Dreisel, I kind of want to know what Connor's doing. You know, what is, yeah, what is right, Connor yeah. McDavid doing? That's yeah. it. Is it fair to him? Is it fair to Connor to say, hey, are you going to sign in, in next year for the next eight years of your life? So I, I actually I think a nice middle ground would be for Leon to sign a one-year extension. Then they both end at the same time, and you can figure out what goes from there. Probably not going to happen, but I think that makes sense for Leon and Connor. But I, you know, I, I get they want to try to figure out their life. Then after that, you've got to figure out the, the bio window. Jack Campbell, that contract has not worked out. Does a bio make sense? Can you make a deal like you saw maybe with uh, PLDB, of course, going from L.A. out to Washington, then uh, Kemper coming back the other way? Like a deal I thought, and I know it probably wouldn't happen, but McKayev for Campbell. I know Campbell is three years, McKayev two years, but like, does that make sense? I don't think that can actually need a goalie, but like that's the type of deal. Maybe mm -hmm. you go out to um, Islanders with... Uh, Pajo, you know, there's another guy two years left, kind of the same money, Campbell has three, though. That's the problem. I don't know if that works, but, you know, maybe a, a trouble-for-trouble contract. Does that make sense? Where maybe you can yeah. each find a way to get that contract going. And then, like, there's there's Connor Brown, there's Henrik, who was uh, the ultimate pickup in this in this uh, yep. uh, playoff uh, uh, pick for, for uh, Ken Holland. Um, you know, you've got so many guys that you have to figure out, including Janmark, the janitor, who had a great uh, playoff run. So uh, I'm really interested to see what happens. Vinny Darren, hey, you know, I think Vinny's maybe a big guy. Maybe the Vancouver look like, you know, because he's a big guy. Maybe he can take up some of his minutes on the penalty kill. Toronto might look at him. So there's tons of work to be done, but you need to know who the GM is and what direction you're going in. So, yeah. I mean, the next 10 days are going to be a whirlwind for them to yeah. know and their fans. Uh, it's been a crazy run here in Edmonton, as you guys will remember, with the runs that Canucks have had in the past. Yep.
And, and, and quickly, Jason, what kind of a hockey town is Edmonton anyway? I thought people up there loved hockey. There was no riot last night. Yeah. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, we did. I guess they didn't show they truly loved it. <laughs> yeah. no, you know what? I think that, you know, there. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit worried, right? Because I think that um, this playoff run, the new building, the beautiful weather in, in the summer really showed Edmonton in a good spotlight. Like, I'm not going to try to say that Edmonton's downtown is as beautiful as Vancouver. Cooper, like I'm not, I'm not that biased, but you know, I think it showed it really well. The fan spirit was incredible, and I thought that the the Canucks in Vancouver, or sorry, the Oilers and the Canucks had a great, a great rivalry going there. The fans both showed really well. I think they were two of the strongest fan bases in the NHL. The way that they showed and supported their team, so I was a little bit worried because that yeah. can all be unraveled uh, with you know a couple you know people making some bad decisions or being you know over intoxicated or whatever but i thought it really looked well so i was proud of the way the people celebrated the team um you know canucks fans know just as well as uh Oilers fans do recently like you you know you can make the final do everything right to lose doesn't mean the season was a failure it means that that night you weren't better than the other team vancouver's downtown wasn't beautiful after game seven in 2011 just a little, yeah. little side note there uh jason <laughs> <laughs> hey like i said my friend you've been on with us so much uh, we have to start uh paying you uh, yep. ryan you can you can get on that but thanks uh so much what a run it was uh for the oilers yeah a lot of i'm actually coming out to vancouver to do some fishing now this week so, oh, there, so maybe nice put a good word in for me with the fish let them know that i'm coming out there i'm not a big angler but i act like one so we'll see if i can actually get it done well nice. rick, rick will put on his speedo get out into the ocean and talk to the fish for you oh. Th thanks for this I, jason I, no that's <laughs> not needed i don't want to catch fish that bad rick. Do, not do, that. do not do that rick Promise i will me. not do that my friend <laughs> thanks jason. Boys. Uh, appreciate it